song for Magic of Mystery Joe, Magic of Mystery Joe. Um, song is mainly Paul McCartney's. Uh, I believe the, I love the harmonies in that song, which obviously I cannot do right now. And uh, the ending, it's the, with the piano, it's, it's really cool. Um, and uh, the Magic of Mystery Joe. The, the last part that John sings, I think, it's, it's one of the best parts. And um, right, it's an album, 1967, that... Um, um, the, what I explained a little bit in the Sgt. Pepper's album, it was that conceptual time period. This is so much different than uh, Rubber Soul and, and you know all those kinds of albums. And uh, this is the Psychedelia, obviously, era. Um... And the the movie is just like super crazy and uh, uh, very very weird, very Python esque. A lot of Monty Python stuff going on in that movie. That kind of humor, British humor, I guess. Uh, th there's a version of Magical Mystery Tour done by Cheap Trick that is really really cool. Uh, it's totally worth checking out. Uh, I think it's a little bit of an overlooked song and like an overlooked album. Generally, we're going to talk a little bit more about the album as we go. But because um, I don't think it has the, the identity of an album. It's more of a, the soundtrack to like a crazy weird movie. I want to say a little bit in Sgt. Pepper's like... A lot of people think of John Lennon being like the the uh, concept artist, conceptual artist with Yoko and all that. But I think that Paul also had that, that kind of uh, outside, out of the box kind of thinking. 
even though his songs are much more user friendly <laughs> than John's, like I'm the Wireless, for instance, is a super weird song compared to Hello Goodbye. It's a very typical progression of chords and melodies and all that compared to I'm the Wallace. Anyways, uh, it's one of Paul McCartney's most overlooked songs, I think, and one of his best for sure. songs and uh, said a little bit overlooked I think I think a lot has to do with uh, that he has so many and so many great songs that some of them get a little lost all right now for um, flying uh, just like a, an instrumental jam very basic thing probably if you're gonna catalog all like worst Beatles songs this has to be in one of them because it's not even a song it's just something for the, the, the soundtrack of the movie some crazy thing they did with the colors of the um, uh, the part that they're going on the bus and there's a look at the window and uh, they talk about that in the anthology when you see all the the mountains and stuff that in black and white on TV when that 
movie was released because I think that movie was released for British television or something like that. And uh, that, that you see everything in black and white didn't make any sense. But when you see it in color, then it was all the psychedelic <laughs> stuff. That they, I don't know what they were smoking or doing. A lot of LSD in this time period. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit of, of I'm not going to get very into it. Um, flying. I'm just going to do it because I'm doing every single Beatles song. And that's it. They have a uh, one that is also called the 12 bar original. <laughs> it's just that I'm doing like uh, I, don't, I don't remember how it went, but like a typical 12 bar blues and uh, it's a little bit of uh, Beatles jams they used to have around. Uh, in the uh, Let It Be Abbey Road, Let It Be sessions, there there's a lot of that stuff going on. Uh, the uh, the jams and uh, the old rockabilly stuff that they were just like recycling a lot of their root uh, music, things that they were used to listen to. Uh, one of the weirdest Beatles songs also uh, is this one by George Harrison. I uh, haven't done it in a while. See the order of the uh, verses.
right. Uh, some George Harrison there are very influenced by Indian music, I think. Uh, so, like, just one note. Uh, just a uh, constant C. Uh, especially John and George had that uh, thing of um, working with just a few chords and uh, doing some mostly George influenced by, by Indian music, as I said. And, uh, that diminished chord that uh, George loved doing it, especially uh, in his um, solo career. Same as the slide. I always, uh, always was curious why George didn't pick up, pick up the slide during the Beatles. Uh, he did explore a lot uh, in his solo career with that. All right, some more Paul McCartney. So say like this in this album also you can see Paul Paul songs that are more uh, typical and George and John a little bit more outside the box. Anyways. Your mother should know. Let's all get up and dance to the sun. When was it before your mother was born? song about uh, Paul McCartney. Um, I think uh, Paul has a lot of mother in his, uh, like, Mother Mary comes to me, Mother Nature's son. Uh, he had a thing over there with his mother, and John obviously too. I'm not going to analyze it. the Beatles, but uh, there was a little bit of that. Anyways, this is one of probably the most, the weirdest, most interesting um, Beatles songs. Oh, one of my favorites, for sure. Uh, in the anthology, there's a part of an interview where John says that this is, the song is probably going to be, uh, keep being interesting for another hundred years. Um, it hasn't been a hundred years yet, but it's still super crazy great song
Beatles song, even though it has it barely has guitar. That song, uh, it always caught my attention. How I mean, uh, there's uh, George does a guitar like doing the fifths and stuff, which makes it more rocker. But it's very in the background. It's more that 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 piano, that weird effect in John's voice and uh, um, and and the orchestra. The oh my god, the orchestra in that song is is great. Ringo's drums in that song is they're very heavy. They're very like to the beat. Great. Uh, I don't know. Um, it, it 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 has that 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 pace of heaviness, and uh, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's that that song is a masterpiece. 
As I said before, now we're getting into the B side, and um, which some of the songs we're gonna see that um, they were recorded before in 1967, like Strawberry Fields, Penny Lane, and All You Need Is Love. And they included it here. Um, I think I'm not sure about these facts, but I think a Magical Mystery Show was released as an EP first, and then they added this early 1967 songs to make an LP. Uh, this like singles to make an, an LP. I'm not quite sure, but all the songs are from 1967, which... If you do all the songs in Sgt. Pepper's the same year, I mean... <laughs> and the movie. What a great time period. Uh, anyways. Going with Paul. You say yes, I say no You say stop, and I say This song, I don't remember that much, but I don't think this song is in the movie. They do have a promo video for it, which um, I think the Beatles were quite pioneers in this. There's a whole, I think George made a lot of fun, uh, uh, like made fun of the fact that the Beatles like invented everything, or were like the pioneers to do a lot of stuff. But I do think that the promo video stuff was kind of like the Beatles were kind of one of the pioneers in that. Because they got tired of going to the TV shows to perform and they wanted to spend more time at the studio. Like around 1966 with paperback writer Rain, um, 
a little earlier when they did help uh, uh, that video that they they're with the umbrellas and Ringo's and the bike and being goofs uh, we can work it out um started a little earlier like that then like in paperback writer or rain especially rain because they don't even have instruments they're not even singing they're just like hanging around in a park and they made a music video out of that because they i mean song is cool they, they look cool why not um <laughs> So, uh, um, hello, goodbye. It's kind of because uh, they have the, the Sergeant Pepper's uniforms, and it's not Sergeant Pepper's. Which is like, why, why would they do that? I mean, why, why wouldn't they include hello, goodbye, and Sergeant Pepper's, or why wouldn't they do that for Sergeant Pepper's song? Who knows? All right, this is probably again said with a day in the life. This is probably my other favorite song in the world. This one, I'm the Wallace, uh, A Day in the Life, I think is John's best work ever. And this song in particular, I think it, it, it uh, divided, it's, it's like the perfect separation between what the Beatles were doing before and, and what they were doing after and how music and the world and everything changed. Again, another promo video that was like really cool too. Uh, this one and uh, one of the biggest Beatles uh, anthems ever. It is in a weird key between A and A flat. I'm gonna do it in A flat because I think it sounds a little bit. <clears throat> I always thought it sounded better in, 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 in B flat, even though there's there's something there with the with the the speed of the tape that is kind of weird that's why john's voice sounds a little bit more like this anyways let me take you down cause i'm going to strawberry I'm 
Anyways, uh, I think that's one of the best Beatles songs ever, period. Um, I love Story Feels. I think it's very, very uh, touching and moving. And uh, well, John wrote it obviously in the the, the movie he was doing, Rachel Lester, uh, I Won the War, and uh, the. The versions of that song, there's like uh, the takes on that song uh, that are in the anthology. Agreed to uh, see how the song evolved from the very first uh, early takes and demos until later on into what it was transformed after. I, I think I have a few um, bootlegs of a few um, more takes of Strawberry Field, so it shows you how John uh, did it, and uh, and also how um, the George Martin's arrangements there are phenomenal. Uh, Ringo's drumming, I think, throughout all this album, it might be the best R Ringo's ever been, and in the remasters versions, in the CD and uh, vinyl. You can hear the drums a little bit more in the new mixes. Uh, uh, Giles Martin hasn't done Magical Mystery yet, but he has done Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane and has put it in Sgt. Peppers, um, which they were originally going to be long. Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane were originally for what Sgt. Peppers started to be was um, this album about their uh, childhood and things about Liverpool, all that. Uh, then it turned into Sgt. Peppers, and they were going to be included there. They weren't there. They were released as a single, Sorry Feels in Pain Lane. And later on, they were put in to complete Magical Mystery Tour into an LP. Here's another super Beatles song by Paul McCartney. Uh, fantastic, fantastic song. I love how Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane are like John and Paul, and that's that. That sums up everything. If you want to say, okay, uh, Martian comes and say, okay, who was John and who was Paul McCartney? I think if you do, if you give him Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane, that's it. It sums it up. <laughs> Pretty good. Anyways, Penny Lane. In Penny Lane, there is a barber shop and photographs. Of every head inside the palace tonight All the people that come and go Some say hello On the corner is a banker with a motor car The little children have an hand behind his back And the back of him was a back In the pouring rain Very strange
have two more songs. This album is a little bit short. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven songs, yeah, compared to the fourteen songs we were doing before, though, the songs are a little longer than uh, the earlier albums, like um, The Wallers and. Um, what else is kind of longish? No, oh, all the songs are pretty much the same. Um, my Magical Mystery Tour, a little longer, but. Uh, Take two. album again another song that was um, recorded I think earlier I'm not, I'm not very good about the dates mm -hmm. the song was also included in Yellow Submarine and uh, was released as a single again um, John has I'm the wall this story feels forever and all you need is love in this album which is pretty good mm -hmm. or uh, I think uh, I always thought, you know, Y album was one of probably. I think John is is great in the Y album. I think in this album he's too. Well, Paul has Hello Goodbye, Penelene. Your mother should know I'm a magical mystery too. I mean, it's 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 a. I think it's a great album, even though it doesn't have that identity of an album. It's more of a, like the soundtrack to that weird movie, and that has a weird cover. I think it's one of the ugliest Beatles cover. 
Uh, I wouldn't cover um, like extreme psychedelic because Sgt. Pepper's is psychedelic, but it's still much more elegant and presentable um, than this one. Then when, when you go to Abbey Road, for instance, which it was, it, it was just only a couple of years after this. It looks they look so much more mature. It's such it's more mature in a way. This seems like still like kind of immaturish with the bright colors and the LSD and the psychedelia and all that. Um, again, I think uh, it's it's a great um, Paul's concept. I think the movie didn't like no one quite got it. Um, I thought I heard Spielberg say that uh, in school, when he went to like filming school or something like that, uh, they watched Magical Mystery Tour as, you know, something to learn from, maybe what not to do. <laughs> I have no idea, but uh, it, that, that the movie has that kind of like artistic value. Uh, I don't really see it. Um, I mean, I think it's a good. I think it's a. I, I think it has good moments, but as a movie, debatable. Um, the movie has the the um, the world was scared. That is great. Um, the um, your mother should know that is great. Uh, Blue Jay Way. I don't know why they included Blue Jay Way and not Hello Goodbye. They could have put it in there. I mean, it, just, it didn't really matter. Um, anything could go, and and that, I think that's that's pretty much the concept of this album, or or with this movie, or with this time period, that anything could go, anything could go. They could do anything, and it'll be fine. Yeah. This is the last song. It's probably one of the most perfect Beatles anthems and uh, one of the best uh, if, if uh, this song should be out in space <laughs> the Voyager if it's not there we should like send another probe to space with this song anyways it's finished Magical Mystery Tour and uh, I don't I have no idea what I'm gonna do with Yellow Submarine yet because I, we only have like four songs there because all you need is love is in Yellow Submarine and Yellow Submarine and Yellow Submarine, which we already covered in Revolver, and then uh, we have only a Northern song, Hey Bulldog, um, It's All Too Much, and uh, all together now. So it's four songs. We're gonna, I'm going to see what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to do a whole stream of four songs or just include them somewhere, because I don't know if the White Album, because the White Album is very, very long. That's going to take some time. I don't know if... I can do it in two parts, or three, because the first album has 17 songs. It's quite a lot. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, anyways, let's finish up with Magical Mystery Tour. <laughs> let's start with uh, Love, Love, Love. One, two, three. Love, Love, Love. Thank you. 
Anyways, that was Magical Mystery Tour. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, maybe you can get something out of this. Um, so next time, I'm going to dive into the deep waters of Y album. Said I don't know if I'm going to do it in one, two, three, whatever. We'll see. Um, one of these days, I'm going to keep um, doing the, the Beatles broadcasts. Um, and uh, leaving them on YouTube. Anyways, I uh, hope uh, you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time with the Wild Album.